an emergency sewing situation this week and I have a fast project that I can get done in one day and I'm going to take you along with a straight through sew with me. We're revisiting a pattern that I just made. My sister needs a top ASAP and this is the pattern she wanted and I just sewed it up. So we're gonna do it again. We're doing a different view this time. Um, the first thing I wanna show you is this liquid lame has been on the bolt for a while and can you see this crease? It's now permanently in the fabric. You cannot press liquid lame, it's melty. So wherever that crease is, is pretty much gonna be there. And the one, one of the best ways to handle that because the view I'm doing this time can be cut on the fold um, if we line this up directly on that crease, you would see that crease down the center front of your body every time you wore the shirt. So instead, we are going to refold our fabric just wide enough to hold my pattern pieces. And that moves that line over. And depending on how wide the pattern piece you need is, it may move it over far enough that it just disappears to the side. Um, in this case, it's going to be all the way down here. Much less noticeable. So we're refolding our fabric. The other nice thing about doing this is that we are parsimonious with our fabric, which means we get to use the scraps for something fun. And this is a really fun fabric that I could see being used in a costume or doll clothes. Um, it actually make a fun pillow. So our scraps will, be get, will, will get to use into something fun. So now I'm gonna finish cutting out can be kind of tricky to work with. Pins don't always like to go into it, neither do sewing machine needles. Um, it also sometimes can leave holes where you've stitched and you can see them, so you want to make sure you're more careful with your stitching because if you stitch in the wrong place and you seam rip it, you may see the holes when you're done. And the same with your pins. If you pin down the center of this fabric, you might end up seeing those pin um, holes <laughs> when you're done. So I always pin close to my cutting line or in my seam allowance, um, just to prevent anything from showing once the garment's completed. And you always make sure, if you're cutting on the center front, that you have your center front line perfectly on that fold. This is the sleeve for this view, and it's a long sleeve with the deep hem, which we don't want. We want just a little cap sleeve. So what I do when I want something like that is I measure my side seams on each side, and I fold it where I want that hem to be, and then I fold in all of the extra length so that it's not in the way when I cut. See how it's, and then pin it down. So now when I go to cut this sleeve, it'll be the right length. I already have my other two main big pieces laid out and here's the sleeve and because I repositioned the fabric this sleeve does not fit yet because of how I've repositioned the fabric but you can see there's just enough fabric at the end I could get the sleeve out there's also a whole lot it's actually hanging off the table on the side that the sleeve could go in so I'm going to wait to, to cut the sleeve or even pin it down, I'm going to go ahead and cut out my two main body pieces, and then I will come back and pin down the sleeve and cut it out. And this time, I went ahead and prepped the fabric and did all of that beforehand. So you don't
My last piece to cut out is this little neckline casing. And because I've made this pattern before, I know that the neckline piece was a little, to me, too long and it didn't pull the neckline in like I liked. So I've actually altered this just a little bit. I'm cutting down one size. So I cut the shirt out an extra large, but the neckline casing I'm cutting out a large just to make the neckline pull in. This is my last piece. Um, I can use the scrap of this because this is a two-way knit, two-way stretch knit, so I can go either direction on this, and it'll be fine. So this is my last one. Alright, so I'm going to start with my front and my back. I'm just going to pin them together at the shoulder. And I'm going to, can you see the line? That little line is going to be in the garment no matter what we do. It will help once it's been washed and worn a few times, but it's going to be a lot. Here's the front of the garment, so you can see there is no line in the front. The line's way over here in the underarm. So that's why we repositioned it. So I'm going to put right sides together. Super easy to tell right sides on this fabric because it's so shiny. Okay. Now, when I go to top stitch this, I like working with liquid lume, but I will tell you, when I used to do dance costumes, we pretty much just did serged hems or no hem because this um, likes to stick to the machine and the foot. When you're sewing on the inside like this with the right sides together, it's not too much of a problem. Can you see how hard it is to get a pin through? So we will have to make some decisions at the hemming when it comes to time for hemming. But for now, we're just going to pin our shoulder seams and stitch. I'm going to do this entire garment on the sewing machine. I am not going to use my overlock for this project at all. It doesn't fray. Um, I can get a good st stitch with it for this. This is also something that um, is a little more difficult to sew with, and I have a lot of control at my sewing machine, so that's what I'm going to do. I have my machine set for 2 width and 2.9 length. I'm going to line it up, and if you see the foot, I don't know if you can see it in this, but the foot goes up and down. I'm using a knee lifter for that instead of my hand, so when you see it sort of floating, I'm controlling that with my knee. Always remove your pins before you sew. You want to take a couple of stitches, and I'm hoping you can see in the camera how it pushes the fabric down. That's the nature of this. You can get ballpoint needles. <clears throat> There's quite a few different kinds of needles you can get that will help. Um, I have not had amazing success when working with Liquid Lame with any of them, but I know that some people really um, Love a good ballpoint needle for this. I'm going to go slow because it does it bounce so much, the fabric does, that you could get a skip stitch. And I want to kind of keep an eye on my stitches. There's one shoulder seam. There's the other one. seams are together, I can either put the neck binding in or put the sleeve in. And I think I will go ahead and just get the neck binding done. So here's my neck piece. And 
and we are going to make a circle out of it. So we're just going to fold it long end to long end like that. And stitch that first. You can see I cut a little bit wonky right on this end. But it won't show because it's in the seam allowance, so it'll be fine. And now I'm going to quarter my neckline and quarter my neck band after I fold it in half here. Now this cannot be pressed at the sewing machine, which is my favorite way of doing things, so I'm going to finger press it and fold it out so the right side is showing and this seam that I just made will become the center back oops there we go and this will become my center front make sure they're even all right now I'm gonna find the middles of the this sides it won't exactly be the side seam or the shoulder seam but it'll be close and I'm making sure I have my edges perfectly lined up this is called quartering and you use, do this for elastic for necklines for a lot of things it makes it easy when it's time to put it back in Twisted, there we go. All right. Here's my edges. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the neckline. Now the neckline is scooped, so the front and the back are easy. We just um, go back to our center front, center back. But the shoulder is not in the center of the neckline. It's to, it's actually pushed towards the back. The front is longer, so we'll have to do um, a second measurement for that. So I'm going to go ahead and mark my center front. center back and now we'll, when we put our center front to our center back we can find our other quarter of this so here's my shoulder seam but this is actually the even quartering for the neckline And I'm not stretching it, I'm just um, pulling just enough to get it to line up. And now I'm ready to put the two pieces together. So here's my pretty right side of my garment. This little seam is going to be my center back. So which one is the back on this garment here? The back is smaller than the front. So I hold it by shoulder seams. It's easy to tell this is the back. So I'm going to line up, trim these, all these threads off, give it a haircut. There's one. Just go on to the next one. Pin on pin. I always pin so that when I'm at the sewing machine I can pull my pins out to the right. Or I try to always pin like that. The first time I made this garment I just cut the neckline exactly like the pattern said and in my opinion it was not um, tight enough. Usually the neckline is two to four inches, uh, the neck band is two to four inches smaller than the neckline in something like a t-shirt 
um, where, so it'll pull the neckline in a little bit and it makes the band lay nice and flat. And this one, they were almost identically the same size and it didn't pull it in at all. Um, and it was fine, I could iron it and make it look nice, but for this fabric, we can't iron it. And I don't want to do any more top stitching than absolutely necessary, so I actually made my neck band a little bit smaller. So now I am going to slightly stretch my neck band to just enough to make it meet the neckline. And make sure all I have three edges to line up now. I have the two of the folded neck band and the one of the shirt. So I've got to get all those edges lined up. And then I'm also going to pin open this seam. Oops, I have a thread. So I'm going to open that up and put some pins in that too. So I want this seam open instead of being pushed to the front or the back. All right, I'll get back with you in about five minutes when I'm done. All right, we're all pinned together. Here's my neckline. This is the binding or the neck casing that's going to be on the inside. So now I'm going to remove this whoops, so that I have my free arm here. And stitch it. It doesn't really matter where you start on a circle like this, but I always either start at the shoulder seam or the center back. And take our needle here. There we go. And this is a curved seam I'm sewing, so I'm going to kind of hang on. I am gently stretching, but not very much. See, this is just how the fabric and the needle are react, or the pin are reacting to each other. When I remove it, it'll be happy. Now this pattern is all 5 8 seam allowance, including on this little neckline. I'm going to just pull it over for a minute so you can see. That's where I've stitched. And that's the neckline for the shirt. So many pins there, kitchen. Now, what I'm doing here is I've sunk my needle because I have a, uh, my seam allowance from the inside. I'm going to raise my toes up of my foot so they're over that. It's easy to push these over and to um, get a fold like that, which I don't want. And if I just stop for a minute and raise the foot up over it with the needle sunk, you won't change your stitching line at all, but it'll keep you from getting a fold over. full circle. And I'm just coming back over my stitches. So if you cross your old stitching line, it's the same as back stitching, or you can do a couple little back stitches. You don't ever want to overdo it. And we're done. I'm going to give it a quick haircut. And now, flip it around so you can see the neckline.
there's the neckline now. It's really wide, and I'm probably going to come in and trim off some of this excess since I didn't serge it, just to help prevent it from wanting to flip over, but looks nice. Okay, next to sleeve. Um, went in and marked with little tiny slits the top of the sleeve, the back notches, in the front, I don't cut out a triangle, I just do a little tiny slit straight through the, uh, the triangle. I'm going to pull it over here so you can see. Here's my triangle notch, and I cut a little slit like that through it. And then I did one also up here where this circle is, and there. So this is to help me know where my shoulder seam is to line it up. So now, because I know this is the front of my sleeve, I have the little front notch. I can find the front of my blouse here and line them up. So this is the front and I need the sleeve that will go right sides together and line up the notch. And see I marked the notch on the blouse too. So when I put them together, they meet perfectly. So I'm going to line that up and I'm going to line to the edge. I'm doing a flat method sleeve instead of a set-in sleeve because this is technically a t-shirt. I'm going to open that up just like I did at the neckline and I'm going to find my notch for the shoulder and line it up with that. And I'm going to put a couple pins in this one because I want it to hold down those seams so they don't fold over while I'm stitching. Now to the back. This is my back notches. And to the edge. I've been thinking about how I want to hem this and I may not hem it at all. I may just leave it. If you see how it looks, that is the hem edge and if I cut it nice and smooth, get rid of any jaggedness that's there, I think we can leave it. Otherwise, it'll be folded with a stitching line and I think it may look less attractive. I'll try it out on a scrap first, but I'm thinking about not hemming, just so that it hangs nice and doesn't look bulky. All right, so now I've got this. This is my shirt and this is my sleeve and you can see the extra in the full whoops in the fullness there so I'm going to slightly stretch the shirt you can't do this in wovens but in a, in a knit like this you sure can slightly stretch the shirt not the sleeve to ease that in and I do mean slightly it takes very little so now when I go to sew it I'm going to put the sleeve down and let the feed dogs do the work of easing in any extra or any fullness. And we're also, one thing about sleeves is you have a convex curve meeting a concave curve as a rule. Um, and you have the, the concave curve is the shirt side and the con Vex, I hope I'm saying that right, is the sleeve side. And that's what makes it fit nicely though. So if I hold this up, you can actually see some fullness and some roundness in that sleeve and that makes it fit nicely over our shoulder. So that's um, just part of the pattern making and the design to make the garment fit our bodies. All right, we're all pinned in and ready to start stitching. And raise my foot up and put my threads under my foot into the back before I start. And 5 8 inch line, sink my needle. My machine, if I have been away from the machine and come back, which I was, I went away and made supper, came back. Um, it always makes that noise when it starts back up. All right, here we go. Oh, and I did the opposite of what I wanted. Look, my sleeve is on top. 
So I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to go to this side. Ta-da! Yep. And now this leaves on the bottom. And it's fine that I did that. They'll just meet up on the other side. I don't have to take those stitches out. There's nothing wrong with them. And it's in the underarm, and the underarm has no um, easing to be done. The underarm of the sleeve and the underarm of the shirt should fit exactly together up to the notches or just beyond them. So we'll just sew until we meet up with our old stitches. Now I could have, I didn't think to, but I could put my tray table back on for this part because I'm through with the small neckline and I think I will before I do my next sleeve. It gives me a more work surface. my old stitches. I'm just going to trim that off on the top and run right back into them. All right. I don't have to back stitch because you can see and it may be hard to see where they overlap is the same as if I had a back stitch. All right that's sleeve one. Now we're going to examine it. And there's that pretty little sleeve. Look how nice that looks. Yeah, I'm really pleased with that. All right, next sleeve. I'm all lined up for sleeve two, and I just thought I'd give you a little close-up of the machine and what it looks like when I set it up. So I'm going to sink my needle. I always like to sink my needle, make sure that my tails are pulled to the back. So my needle's down. See how I can raise and lower my foot. So my foot's all set up, and that's what it looks like. So that when I start stitching, I've got it on the 5 8 inch line. You see how the machine does a very small zigzag? And then we'll back stitch it. About two to three is stitches backwards is all you need for a back stitch. All right, so that's what it looks like. The stitch looks like when I'm sewing. And then I'm going to show you an up close stitch so you can see how it looks. Let me move that where there's better light. That's the how the seam actually looks, okay? And if you see, you can kind of see this little ripple. That's the, uh, this is actually where the sleeve and the bodice are coming together. You're looking at the sleeve side. So this is the easing in that was done by the feed dogs. All right, we're ready to do our side seams. And we're going to match up starting at the hem or the underarm. So here's our hem. We're going to line up here at the hemline. And because we have these weird angles, it's going to look a little funny. But what we want to do is make sure that where the 5 8 inch line meets, they meet. All right, so that's how it should look. So this is Where it goes. So there's my hem. And I'm going to do the underarm sleeve, underarm seam. And the seam allowances at the underarm or at the sleeve should go toward the sleeve. All right, so those are lined up. And now we're just going to put some pins in between. If you start at one end and slowly work your way across, you almost always will get some stretch and you, this won't line up at the other end. You'll have one longer than the other. It just happens. No matter how carefully you cut, it has to do with how your, the fabric is being manipulated while you're pinning. So if you pin it um, top, bottom, and middle before you, um, before, instead of going from one end to the other, you're going to have better success. So if you've ever had problems with pinning and it always comes out wrong at the end, it could be because you're pinning from one end to the other instead of sort of dividing it up between. So I'm going to finish pinning my seam here. And then I am going to trim back 
So I have these seam allowances. I think I'm going to trim under this arm, for instance. Because this fabric does not fray, um, I don't, and I don't need to alter this. I know this already. I already know this fits her. I think that for both reasons and for comfort reasons, I'm going to get rid of a little bit of this excess seam allowance right here. You don't have to get rid of every, all of your seam allowance, but I want to get rid of a little bit of it. So even with it pinned, I can do it. So here's my stitching line. Here's my cutting edge, and I'm going to come in and kind of divide them between the two. And I'm going to just trim out. I'm not going to trim out the whole thing. I'm just going to trim to the notch. And that's just less bulky under the arm. It, it always is nice not to have a huge bulky seam under your arm if possible. So I'm going to do that on this one. And I should have done it before I pinned it together, but I just, you know, thought of it now. After it was pinned, I remembered. So now I have a narrow seam allowance right there, but a lot less to go under the arm. And this is now ready to stitch. And again, we want these seam allowances pressed to the sleeve, not to the garment side or to the body. Line this up. Sink my needle. Whoop. you can hear but we're having a very heavy storm right now. To that weird spot where they the seam meets but the angles are funny and I'm just looking to make sure and it lines up perfectly. I'm gonna back stitch. Alright. Have one seam side seam done. So there's the whole side seam. Trim our threads. My trash can under my sewing cabinet and now I'm going to come around to this side and I also think I'm going to trim out a bunch of the seam allowance at the neckline because we don't need all that hanging out on our neck. All right, I'm going to use my big scissors and trim out this seam allowance under the arm and go ahead and get these tails while I'm at it and give it a haircut. A couple more. I like to, I prefer to cut my threads with different scissors, but I can cut them with these. Oh man, I'm going to cut a bunch, it looks like. There's the other one. All right. And now, from the notches to the under the underside of the arm's eye, the armpit area. Okay. And we're ready to do the other one. All right, I've done both side seams. This is the inside of the shirt. So you can see this is the rough side, the inside. All right, and now I have to decide what to do with this neckline. I'm going to flip this around to the right side. One thing I always like to do with things like this, with these necklines is where I have all this extra seam allowance on the inside, I will stitch it down to this, and that just, not to the outside of the shirt, but I actually stitch seam allowance to seam allowance. So I lift it up like that, and I stitch just in that area, and what that does is, and you have to make sure you stitch it correctly, because if you stitch it wrong, you're pinning down your seam allowance in the wrong place, it can make a buckle. But what that does is it helps hold the seam allowance from the neck piece so that it doesn't want to see how it just wants to flip around. Of course it's not on the body either but you can see see that. You can see it. It's flipping up. So I'm going to trim out a bunch of that because it's just too long. This is another place where I have this big convex curve and I put a straight thing into it. So this line here is smaller 
than the curve it's put into and it makes it want to flip up. So we're going to trim out a bunch of the excess and then I'm going to tack down those seam allowances. When I first started sewing, doing things like this used to make me so nervous because I was afraid I would cut through the wrong thing and ruin my project every time. I'll tell you one other thing, looking at this sparkly stuff, it's a little hard to look at, especially because I have an extra, all these extra lights on down here. It's really reflective. So you can see these are, that's how much I'm cutting off. I'm leaving just a little bit. I don't love, ugh, I can feel it. These are not my gingers. These are Clancy's. They're, I believe that's what that says. I don't know. They're my, my young daughter bought these. My daughter bought these when she was younger. Um, and they're kind of, kind of, they're a nicer scissor, but they're not that great. And they're not nearly as good as my gingers. And so on things like this, when it has a, there's actually metallic on it, it does dull your scissor. So I'm cutting it with a, not as nice a scissor. <laughs> and I can feel it kind of twisting the scissor a little bit. I keep checking just to make sure I don't get the shirt edge. And that one flipped on me. Let me go back and straighten that out. Can you hear the thunder up there? It's a really a storm in suddenly. All right, so here's all these pretty little streamers. And now there's my neckline. Whoops, another streamer. So we're gonna come in right here. I may not even have to do it now that I took out. Look at how much better that lays. Wow, huge difference. Okay, we're gonna take this over the dress form and see what it looks like real quick right now and how nice it drapes. If I put much of a hem in that at all, it would change that drape. Now, there are not a lot of fab fabrics that you can choose not to hem, but this is one of them. One thing I am going to do, if you can look, see it's not perfectly cut on the edge, so I'm going to even up any edges that I see that are not perfect. Um, but there it is, it's all done. There's the neckline. Once it was on the body, it didn't want to flip up at all anymore. There's the hemline, so I'm quite pleased. And this shirt, start to finish, um, took less than two hours. Of course, I didn't hem anything.